Enthalpy change of a displacement reaction. For this lab, we're going to need um, 25 milliliters of copper sulfate solution and uh, zinc powder, a timer, a pipette, 25 milliliters, and a pipette filler, um, styrofoam cup, and um, lid of any kind, and a thermometer that we attached here so we can move the, um, the styrofoam cup in the meantime the reaction takes place. The first thing that we are going to do is to take the 25 milliliters of the copper sulfate solution and we are going to um, pass that exactly into the styrofoam cup. The last drop is supposed to be here, so we are not going to force it down. Okay. Be sure that the liquid touches the thermometer, but the thermometer is not so low that can damage the styrofoam cup. Uh, in this case, I already prepared the um, data table that I'm going to fill out up to nine min minutes. Uh, and we are using 25 milliliters of copper sulfate solution, one molar, and six grams of zinc powder. Be sure that the zinc is completely powder, okay, that there are no clumps, because that can um, slow down the reaction. Then, we are going to measure which is the correct height for the thermometer. So I can move it, but the bulb is inside. It's inside the liquid. And then we wait for the temperature. <clears throat> and we begin recording. So we are going to record the time, every 30 seconds we are going to record the temperature. When we get to the three minutes, we do not record, but at the three minutes exactly, we are going to uh, put the powder zinc and then skip that measurement and then begin measuring again at 3.5 and so on until nine minutes. All the time when you are recording, you need to swirl so the temperature is evenly distributed in the liquid. When the time gets to exactly three minutes, you're going to open the lid, put all the sink at the same time, and continue swirling, and begin looking at the temperature raise, okay? and begin measuring, continue measuring, every 30 seconds until you get to the nine minutes. We plug in all the information in Excel. Um, I erased this uh, cell so it doesn't give me any uh, errors. And then we develop this chart. After we develop the chart that is going to have only the dots, uh, we put two lines, red lines. One is going to be the best fit for this decrease in temperature after the maximum temperature was achieved, and the vertical at exactly three minutes. That is going to tell us the theoretical maximum temperature that would have um, obtained if there was not um, thermal inertia. With those two points, the maximum and the minimum temperature, we can get the delta T of the solution, the, te the temperature increase in this case that the solution of the copper sulfate 
will going to be increasing. In this case, that is the temperature change in the water. And with that delta T, we can calculate the amount of heat released. Well, in this experiment, what we did is to put 25 milliliters of one molar solution of copper sulfate and six grams of zinc. If you calculate the molar ratio, you are going to see that the zinc is the one in excess. So we are going to do our calculations with this. The thing is that when the, these two react, the water that is contained in the solution of the 25 milliliters is going to absorb the heat releasing the reaction. So we are going to calculate, instead of the energy released by the copper sulfate, the energy um, absorbed by the water. So in this case, we are going to talk about the heat absorbed by the water. The calculation of the amount of heat um, absorbed by the water can be done through um, the equation of thermodynamics that says that the amount of heat that is Q is equal to the mass times the specific heat times the delta T where the mass is going to be the mass of water. The C is the specific heat of water. In this case, is 4.18 joules over Celsius um, gram. And delta T is the delta T that we measure in the experiment. We can say that the mass of water is going to be the mass contained in the solution. For this particular example, we are going to take the volume of the um, solution to have um, an approximately one uh, gram per milliliter um, density. So we are going to get the mass of the water as the same as the volume. Okay, so the Q is equal to the mass of the water, which is going to be 25 grams, times C, which is 4.18 joules over Celsius grams, times delta T. And delta T is 70.5 minus uh, 22.5. So the delta T is, uh, this is Celsius. Delta T. The delta T is going to be 48 Celsius. Okay, so 48 Celsius is what we have here. So we cancel Celsius with Celsius, grams with grams, and we can calculate Q. Okay, after doing the calculation of the amount of water that we uh, that absorb the energy, uh, the specific heat. And the delta T that in this case is positive because the temperature of the water is increasing is going to give us an amount of heat that is positive and is 5,016 uh, 5, joules or 5.016 uh, kilojoules. That is the amount of heat released by this amount of moles. We need to calculate now how much is for one mole. We know that the solution that we have is 25 milliliters of a solution one molar. So we know that in 1,000 milliliters, we are going to have one mole of the solute. And if 25 milliliters, of course, we're going to have X, where X is 0 0.025 moles. So the amount of heat that we calculated corresponds to that amount of moles. We need to calculate how much it would be for one mole. So we said for 0 0.025 moles, I have 5.015 kilojoules. For one mole, it's going to be x. Oh, we just can divide the kilojoules divided by the amount of moles. So it's 5.016 divided by 0 0.025. This gives me 264 kilojoules.
What is that? Well, that is the amount of heat absorbed by the water if we had released or we had uh, had uh, a mole of copper sulfate reacting. In this case, is the, the Q is positive because it's the amount of heat that was um, absorbed by the water. But the delta H is going to be minus Q. In other words, the reaction, the enthalpy change of the reaction is going to be negative the amount of energy that was absorbed by the water. So in this case, delta H is going to be 200.64 kilojoules per mole for the reaction of copper sulfate solution, one molar with zinc. The accepted value for this delta H um, is around 219 kilojoules per mole, so we are not so far away from the real value.